Hi everybody, it's Lasha Ryanko and welcome to my channel High Voltage and today we are going through um, Maureen Callahan's Ask Not the Kennedys and the Women They Destroyed. As all of you know, the first uh, for inconvenient women everywhere. Have you ever felt inconvenient in your life? We all know that it starts with F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby. I've talked about the content, the author's note, but I, and I did read the first part of the Carolyn Bassett, but I had to stop when I found out that JFK Jr.'s first trial first case was about a robber who fell asleep while trying to commit a robbery. Um, for some reason that struck me as quite funny because it's the funniest part of the story. I do want to say that Maureen Callahan's writing is unforgiving as it should be. And I want to read the prologue because I was, I've was i almost read the entirety of the book. And this is a really important part that I left out. Ask not the Kennedys and the women they destroyed. Is okay? I'm just going to take this off. It's a little easier to read. As you can tell, I'm quite Canadian and I'm really trying to pronounce my words carefully. Okay, the prologue. This book is not ideo ideo ideological or partisan. It's about 13 women and a piece of American history hiding in plain sight. Kennedy men have been valorized and lionized for nearly a century, but the women they've broken, tormented, the R word, the M word, or left for the D word, have never really been part of their legacy. They must be. None of it is history. As William Faulkner wrote, the past is never dead. It's not even past. The Kennedys remain a powerful and frequently, frequently destructive force, both in our politics and our culture. Now, as a note there, we know that we're talking about American culture. I mean, America is 248 years old. Canada is 157 years old. I love this book so much that I'm writing in it. I'm part of me. You're part of me too. Thank you so much for sending this book through. And you know who you are. And without this, Erased my 53rd birthday bar. It was the best birthday ever. And if you watch the video where I wrote a birthday card to myself and everybody who's passed in life that you lose, as you grow older, you start to appreciate your skin a little more than even in your 40s, believe it or not, depending on your development so, as of this writing, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a prominent conspiracy theorist and anti-vaxxer who has made, well, there's a lot of people that are anti-vaxxers who has made racist and anti-semitistic, anti, oh, please don't, I'm so sorry. Um, anti-semitic comments is running for president of the united states well this was 
obviously written before the um, situation with Donald Trump. He has raised tens of millions from, I wonder if, I wonder, okay, the running mate. Hmm, okay, interesting. I don't even know who Camilla Harris's running mate is right now. It's interesting because um, I guess the reason that I'm bringing up the present with the election and what happened with Trump is, isn't it just ironic that this book comes out and they're, t okay, I have to keep reading. I will go, I said that I would do my assessment at the end, not while things come to me. That's why I have my book. Okay, I just had to take a quick, quick note of that. Okay. <clears throat> Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who was Bobby Kennedy's and Ethel's son, okay? So Robert F. Kennedy Jr., wow, she, the typing and the grammatically the grammatical correctness i haven't seen such a good book in such a long time there's so many quotes and um like a bibliography and all kinds of notes and they're all about ted and mary joe capenci the boiler room girls um at any rate okay Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a prominent conspiracy theorist and anti-vaxxer. There's nothing wrong with that at this point. Trump was pushing for it then as well. So that has to do with the fact that we are being... We're enslaved, all of us. That's why I like this book, because she talks about how people that are victorious always write the history books, not the losers or the people that lose the war. We don't often hear from them, do we? No. Lately, yes. Stay on track. He has raised tens of millions from big donors, almost based on legacy. He remains unbothered and unquestioned about the circumstances leading to the <clears throat> um, his wife um, had um, some depression issues, and we all know what can happen with depression. And there's there was no preventative measures for this woman his wife, Mary Richardson Kennedy, in 2012, a fragile woman whom he tormented toward the end of their marriage and in the lead up to her, cheating on her, cutting off her credit cards and access to cash, trying to forcibly hospitalize her, telling her she'd be better off He continues to smear her reputation, telling the press in December of 2023 that yes, he had flown on the plane, the evil Jekyll's plane, private plane, not once as previously claimed, claimed but twice. And that was only because Mary had a relationship with the evil Jekyll's chef procurer the convicted Ghislaine Maxwell random citizen and I were talking about Ghislaine today that was a good conversation I, I'd like to continue that an assertion that several people who knew Mary well told me it's possible given her character her morality and her devout Catholicism, which by the way, Christianity is being attacked in every way, shape and form right now. JFK Jr. also incredibly was given a huge pass 
for his false accusation that the Savage 19, what? Savage 1975 S A and M of 15 year old Martha Moxley was committed not by his once convicted cousin, Michael Skakel, oh my gosh but by two teenagers from the Bronx, one black, one mixed race, teenagers he publicly named endangering their lives. RFK Jr. wrote that one of the teens was obsessed with Martha's beautiful blonde hair and that both young men decided to go cavemen on her. I See how important these prologues are? Well, I learned my lesson. Imagine anyone but a Kennedy leveling such racist, baseless accusations. The media world, the media would rightly be aflame with indignation. Yet all these decades later, the Kennedys benefit from a perverse double standard in the press in the justice system and in the court of public opinion. Holy, okay. It's double standard that it's clearest and most insidious when it comes to the crimes that Kennedy men have committed against women and young girls that was done to Mary and Martha are only two recent examples. Any victims who dare to fight back will find themselves confronting the awesome power of the Kennedy machine, which reminds me of the Michael Jackson machine. And when Popcorn Planet comes out with, um, I don't believe it. When Popcorn Planet comes out with their rebuttal against that HBO documentary, Leaving Neverland, I will, I'm going to go crazy. I can listen to Michael Jackson's music prior to when I'm pretty sure that his first was, was, was the, was James Safechuck. I don't, I think, no, it was James. James was clearly traumatized. One that, uh, okay, back to the Kennedys. It's just amazing how all of these people connect. I was talking on a video the other day that the evil jackal and uh, GM knew each other in the 80s when Robert Maxwell was alive. And then RC sent me more of Whitney Webb's videos and I was blown away blown away. I want to go to South America and start farming. Does anybody want to come with me? I'm not even remotely joking. Oh, one that re recasts any woman, no matter how wealthy or famous or powerful, is crazy, spiteful, vengeful, a drug addict, a viper, a seductress, whatever grievous is. Boy, she sure does a good job writing. I'm getting angry vengeful, a drug addict, a viper, a seductress, <sighs> whatever grievous harm, whatever obtuse harm a Kennedy man may have done to her, the message remains clear. She was asking for it and it was her fault. Does this still go on to this day? You know, RC, you're right, and there is a, um, a, a total resolution to the issue, but I told you it's not being stopped on purpose. I'm getting angry. Um, one of the um, recasts, okay, no, okay, I read that part, okay. Thus, Camelot, that's very important to remember. Thus Camelot, the fairy tale of the Kennedy greatness and noble men still stands. The late Ted Kennedy wanted Lion of the Senate 
drove off a bridge, and I, and I, I already know all of this, I drove off a bridge and left a 29-year-old woman to, in three feet of water, his passenger, Mary Jo Capecci, whose life could have been saved, yet that criminal act has successfully been transformed into Ted's tragedy. Any awful event that unfairly kept him from ever becoming president of the United States, Ted Kennedy served out the rest of his life in Congress and was giving statements funeral with wall-to-wall -wall news coverage while Capecci's name was barely mentioned. It's so true. The victors write history. What about the other side? He was memorial memorialized by Ellen R. Malcolm, the founder of Emily's List, as a true champion for women. Cecile Richards, then president of